Tanya for the 23rd of Sivan, Chav Gimel Sivan, is in Pedic Zayin, Chapter 7 of Shari Yichud Ve'amunah, on page 312. Middle of the page by the period. With what we said before about the level of Yehuda Taton, that the Abish that is present even in time and space. And the time and space are bottled to the Abish. Now we'll understand that what it means that Ani Hashem Loishanisi. Pirush, the meaning of the Posak is Shein Shum Shinli Klau. There is no change in the Eibushter in his oneness, that just as he was alone, only he existed before the creation of the world. He is also alone. He is still the only thing that exists after the world is created. From you, you are who you are before the world was created, and the same you exists after the world is created. That without any change, without any alteration in his condition, in his oneness and in his onlyness. There's also no change in his knowledge. Because it's through knowing himself that he knows all of creation. Since there can't be any change in the Ebershtim, the question is, <clears throat> before the world was created, there was no world to know. When the world was created, now the Ebershtim knows every created being. So, it, has, it seems at first glance that there is an increase in God's knowledge, which would be a change, and there can be no change in the Ebershtim. So, how is it that although he knows all of creation, Yet there's no change in his knowing, in his knowledge. So the Alter Rebbe says, because he knows everything by knowing himself. Within himself, all things are included. Shahakil mimenu, because everything comes from him, or bottle the Metzies Etzlei, and is completely bottled within him. And as the Rambam writes, Shehu hayedeya, vuhu hayadua, vuhu hadeya atma that he is the knower, the knowing, and the knowledge, all all within himself. And hakil echad, and all of it is all one. They're not three different things, but they're all one within him. And this is something the mouth can't describe, and the ear can't can't hear it. And it's not within our ability to recognize this Clearly, because God, His essence, and His knowledge are all one from all sides. With every form of oneness, the and His knowledge is not it, it, not an addition, not something in addition to His being, to His essence, as it is in the human being that the knowledge is something separate, knowledge of the person, the person's knowledge is an added ingredient to the person himself, because when a person learns and understands something, he already had his soul and his intelligent soul, even before he learned and before he came to know the subject, the Acha Shalomad, and after he learns the subject, the Yeda, and he knows it, Nitesva Yudia Zubanafshi. He has an added knowledge in his, in his Nefesh. Zachain Midayim Biyayim. And the same is true day by day. That Yamim Yedabedu, Vareif Shanim Yediyu Chachma, that the days uh, add, bring intelligence, add wisdom. So although when the person learns and he and he understands a new subject, he absorbs that subject and it becomes one with him, but this is not Ardus Pshuta, it is not an absolute oneness, Ella Murkeves, but rather a composite oneness, 
because there are two separate things joining and becoming one whereas with God there was never any separateness at all it is always one and the same God is absolute oneness without composition without any parts at all so therefore we must say that God and his knowledge are, are all one, literally one, without being compo- composed, without being put together, but initially one. And therefore, just as we can't understand God himself, we also can't understand the nature of his knowledge. But rather to believe. On faith, that we know that God's knowledge is beyond our knowing because God is one and united. He and his knowledge all are one. And in knowing himself, he knows all that exists from the highest to the lowest levels. From the smallest creature in the in the ocean to the smallest uh, insect on earth, all of it God knows within within himself. Because ein dover nela mimenu the ein yediazu may sifa be vibri the harkova klau, and this knowledge does not add anything, doesn't bring more ingredients, a greater composition of parts at all. May acha she ein norak yediaz atzmei veatzmusei vedaite hakil echad. Fish is a koshem may l'tzayer b'sichleinu, and because this is very difficult for us to to conceptualize. That's why the Novi says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, To the same, in the same way, God says, My ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The Novi says, will you be able to see God the way you see other things? When a person sees other things, it's an additional information. He sees it, and he comes aware of it, and that adds some idea, some knowledge to him. And the Eibishta knows within himself, which is all part of the... Uh, of the Rambam statement, Rambam's description of the oneness of God with, it, with his knowledge, which explains how the Ebishter is unchanged even though the world comes into existence, there is no increase in his awareness and in his knowledge. Partial explanation of this, of how it is that this information, the knowledge, doesn't increase, doesn't represent any change in God's knowledge, can be understood from an example that if a person is able to throw a stone ten, 10 yards and another person is able to throw it 20 yards there is a difference in the strength of the person who throws it the, the greater distance that the person with the lesser distance doesn't have because every yard is an entity and if you can throw the, the stone one yard, that's one ability, one uh, one fraction of of, uh, of the ability. If you can throw it two yards, two feet, then it's another part, another section, another additional substance, which which the space is, that this person can cover that the other person may not be able to cover. So when we say that there are two people and one can throw a shorter distance, one can throw a, a further distance, there is a, an addition. There is something that the, that the person who can throw the longer distance has that the shorter distance doesn't have. Same also in terms of the, the size of the rock. 
If you can throw a smaller rock or a larger rock, there's obviously a difference in the person's strength. Qualitative difference. Whereas, if a person throws a stone and he's able to throw it for two yards, but he can throw it to the east, to the west, to the north, and to the south, here we don't say that he has four abilities or that there are four aspects to his ability. That he can throw it not only to the east, he can also throw it to the west. Because it doesn't matter which way he throws it. It's the same strength and the same talent. So why is that? That's because the direction of the throw doesn't represent an element within the strength of the person. A person's ability to throw two, two yards automatically includes within itself two yards in any direction. Because all the directions are equal in this sense. It is not harder to throw to one direction or the other. So the fact that you can throw in all four directions doesn't represent four talents, four abilities. It's the same ability. Whereas if he could throw it not only two yards, but four yards, that would be an additional ability. Then he has gained something. Now, a, a person can throw a stone in six directions. There are six directions to the world. If theoretically, there would be added a seventh direction, then it stands to reason that the person would automatically, naturally, be able to throw in the seventh direction as well. Because direction is not an element within strength of a person. So whatever strength he has in one direction, he would have in any direction. Even if there were a seventh or eighth direction created, he would be able to throw. And we wouldn't say that with the creation of a seventh dimension, and the person is now able to throw it in seven directions, that that would be an increase in his ability. It's not an increase in the ability. The ability is not measured by directions. Because that is already included in the ability to throw. The same is true with God. God's knowledge doesn't come from the object that he, which, which he knows. A human being's knowledge comes from the object. The thing is there, and it lets itself be known, it makes itself known through one of the five senses or through intelligence. And the person discovers its existence. He comes to know it. And so each thing that he comes to know is an additional knowledge. Whereas by God, the knowledge is not coming from the thing that is there. The knowledge comes from the fact that with God, nothing is excluded. Everything is included. Because Ein Dover Nela Mimeka. There is nothing concealed from God. So his knowledge is not a composite knowledge. It's not that he has gathered together information about all sorts of things, and this information now consists of a million details, and when God creates the world, there are another million details that come into existence. So there's a million more pieces of information. It's not additional information because God's knowledge is a passive knowledge. He knows because he can't not know. There is nothing like the person who can throw in all four directions. It's not because he has four talents, but because direction is all inclu all the directions are included within his ability to throw. All knowledge is included in God's in God's in God's knowing. So the fact that God knows includes all that there is to know, because God can't not know something. And so if, if somehow, somewhere, an additional existence comes into being, and God knows that as well, it's not an addition in God. Just like it's not an addition in the person's ability that he can throw it not only to the east, but also to the west. Or in different words, by the human being, the knowledge comes from the object. So the object of his knowledge, the subject, is something separate from the person himself. And then the knowledge, the knowing, not the subject, but the knowing, the, the act of knowing, is also an active one. So it too is something separate from the, from the subject and separate from the knower. Whereas with God, the knowing is passive because it comes from himself not from the object. So the object is not a separate entity. The knowing is not a separate entity. It is all one with the knower, with God himself.
אין שם בהלכה של סיידי התיידו והסכימו עם מכך מהקבולו כמבוע בפרדס מהר המגזל. In the Hayyim Yayim, for the 23rd of Sivan, the Rebbe writes that Mayna Azmur La'amur, my grandfather's answer to my father, Be'yechidus Cherev Tov Reish Lamed Hey. In Yechidus, in the winter of 1874-75, the Zayda said to the father, Hayyetzahad Anikra Nefesh HaBahamis. The Yetzirah is also called the animal soul. When we call the animal soul animal, we don't necessarily mean dumb. Because sometimes the animal soul is as, is as uh, clever as the fox. So that you need to be very smart to understand its, uh, its cunning. Sometimes the animal soul clothes itself in the garments of a tzaddik, of an innocent, of an onov, of a balmides teves. In each person, the animal soul is consistent with the, with the, with the person himself. There's the person in whom he, a, a desire develops, a great desire to study Hasidus or to think deeply and understand uh, a certain subject in Hasidus. And in fact, this could be a trick of the Yetzirah, of the animal soul, to prevent him from davening properly or other such activity. In other words, the, the animal soul could suggest to an individual something that would seem highly desirable for, a diff, for another person, but is inappropriate for him. Take this principle and remember it always. Anything that helps and brings a person to actual Aveda any objection, any resistance, any obstacle in that direction, even if the resistance or the opposition is a very lofty and noble thing, you should know that it is merely the trick or the scheming of the animal soul. And my father concluded and said, Ad az, ad oz lo yodaiti. Until then, I was unaware, as a sken zayin afrume nefesh abahamis, that you can have afrume nefesh abahamis. Ve'ref noach achsidish nefesh abahamis. Let alone ach, an animal soul who comes as a chassid.